Chris O'Brien is the editor of the French Tech Journal. Thank you for speaking with us on France 24. Great to be here. Uh, the um, uh, quote uh, we're hearing of Jeffrey Hinton from The New York Times is that he says, artificial intelligence takes away the drudge work, but might take away more than that. What does he mean? Well, particularly in this case, when we're talking about the technology known as chat GPT, uh, this is AI that goes from just analyzing a lot of data to actually, as the name suggests, generative AI, it generates content. And so it's able to generate text, videos, sound, uh, images that uh, in some very basic forms can replicate what uh, people like me do. Uh, people do any kind of writing, people creating any kind of imagery. So some of that uh, on a very basic level that's churned out at high volume, it seems like ChatGPT could be a replacement for that. Do you think your job could be in jeopardy? Uh, I lose a little sleep over it. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever played with these tools and I really suggested everyone, uh, tune in a little bit and, and take them for a spin, uh, you'd be surprised. And I was surprised as someone even who's been covering tech for 25 years, just how powerful some of them can be. So there's this seminal moment when, um, he worked for Google, but the rival Microsoft is the backer of, uh, of ch that chatbot that you mentioned, ChatGPT, and when it starts appearing on their Bing search engine, that really scared them. Yeah, and specifically in this case, uh, you know, his concern there, you mentioned uh, Google. Google has their version as well, Google Bard. And so he's basically saying he's fearing that this turns into a bit of an arms race because Bing search engine has been a distant number two for a long time. Uh, the company's tried to change that, not had a lot of success. Now it's injected this AI into it, and it seems to have supercharged it. Google's a little freaked out. And so his fear is, well, all the guardrails, all the caution are going to be thrown to the wind. And it's, it will become this arms race that uh, as both these companies sort of battle it out. Now, uh, a lot of comparisons have been made uh, with uh, Albert Einstein, the father of the atomic bomb, Robert Oppenheimer. Uh, expressing their remorse over uh, their uh, work that uh, helped create these weapons of mass destruction. Uh, is this the same case? Is he talking after the fact the way they were? Well, uh, to agree, yeah. And I think it's even a comparison uh, with Robert Oppenheimer that he invoked a little bit. You know, he's uh, that notion that as a uh, developer, as an engineer, as a scientist, you get so caught up in the possibility of making something happen, of making this break for you, breakthrough, you don't take a breath to think, should I be doing this? You, you just get caught up in that sort of frenzied uh, attempt to realize a dream. And then afterwards, you sort of see what you've created. Obviously, in the case of Robert, Imer, Robin, Robert Oppenheimer, that was quite dramatic. Uh, but you sort of see it and you think, oh, my gosh, what have I done? You know, in that New York Times uh, story that we that you referenced on air, uh, what really struck me was his quote saying he's seeing things today that these tools can do that he thought we were 30 to 50 years away from seeing. You know, that really tells me that even someone who's been as fundamental to their creation himself has been surprised by this acceleration we've seen over the past year. Now, Google made an announcement today, had nothing to do with, with um, uh, Jeffrey Hinton. Uh, alongside Apple, it said it submitted a, uh, the proposed industry specifications to help combat the misuse of Bluetooth location tracking devices for unwanted tracking. Are we going to see more and more of these announcements, and do they amount to, well, self-regulation, if you will? Well, I think it's sort of a classic strategy by companies when they kind of see the writing on the wall. They know there's an anxiety out there. They want to get ahead of it and kind of shape these rules. Uh, I think you'll see that more and more with AI. Uh, we saw Google and then Facebook kind of try to do that uh, in the last few years, saying, hey, we believe in regulation too. Let's have a conversation. But suddenly trying to shape what that looks like. Uh, but at the same time, I think they also recognize, and policymakers are probably having this anxiety right now, 
it's very difficult to really shape policy around these things because they move so quickly. Let's talk about those policymakers. Uh, Chris O'Brien, as an American in the suburbs of Paris, where does your faith lie? Does it lie with uh, U.S. regulators, European regulators, or is this just mission impossible? Well, I would lean much more to the EU because I think they're prone to take a more proactive uh, stance on these things. Uh, so I think that's a check in the favor of Europe. I think uh, the U.S. will talk about it a lot and not much will happen there. But again, uh, there is a reference into your, in your story about the legislation at the EU level about AI, and that's a good example worth discussing briefly. They've been working on that AI uh, regulation for two years, and all of a sudden, when the process is just nearing the end, all of a sudden, chat GPT becomes a big thing, and they're scrambling to kind of adapt it to that uh, because it wasn't on the horizon when they started that project. And so I think there will be a little bit of element uh, addressing that in the proposal. But again, by the time that gets debated, adopted, enacted, even from the EU perspective, who knows what the world's going to look like in a year or two years. Well, yeah, because what's the purpose of this uh, legislation? Is it to uh, uh, to enact transparency or is it to, to pick up on the quip you made at the beginning of our conversation to save your job? Well, I think it's very much not an attempt to ban it. I think it's really what you said about transparency. So very, this is a gross generalization, but broadly speaking, uh, it sort of puts three labels around uh, AI in terms of how much of an impact it makes and then sets out uh, some transparency requirements around that in terms of sharing what elements are going into driving that AI creation. So now again, with chat GPT, what they're trying to do is say, okay, uh, you have to disclose, disclose the, the sore origin of any images or content uh, to ensure any, to avoid any cap copyright issues or reusing other people's work. But again, that's obviously a very limited uh, guardrail against this type of technology. Uh, last week on the show, uh, we had a, a Democratic Party strategist who was in Washington who uh, rued the fact that in his view, looking ahead to their elections next year in the United States, uh, the Democrats were showing up uh, uh, to this fight with a butter knife and that the Republicans were way ahead of the game when it came to AI. That immediately brings back the memory of 2016 when uh, tech-savvy uh, people worked with the Republicans on micro-targeting uh, more successfully than the Democrats did. Uh, is, is, do you see any evidence for that, that there's one side that's better at it than the other? Well, I would definitely say the conservatives have become much more effective at utilizing those types of tools in terms of uh, creating memes, creating vir virality across different types of content that spread very quickly across their media ecosystem. Um, you know, what's worrisome with this generative AI technology is that now really anybody can create this stuff. It's as simple as typing a search into Google, really. You know, you just need to come up with a few keywords and generate a photo or a video or, or text. And it's very difficult to distinguish many of those things from the real deal. And so I think I expect over the next year, we're going to see an astonishing increase in the volume of that kind of misinformation, disinformation uh, for the for the next election. And I think it'll be uh, a shock to people and a real issue. And, you know, again, you get into that question of does do federal election uh, officials try to get ahead of it? Are there rules that Congress could put in place to stop that? It's it's hard to know. Um, but in terms of arming themselves, I have to believe both sides are really have this on the radar and are trying to think, how do we weaponize this against the other party? Chris O'Brien, the uh, editor of the French Tech Journal. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. Pleasure to be here.